Welcome to Ask an Expert Atlanta Edition. Today we're joined by Matt Meehan, who oversees the Atlanta market for Rex Homes. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, so let's start with just tell us about yourself outside of real estate. Like, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Uh, I actually grew up in Colorado and uh, was born and raised in Colorado, lived there for uh, quite a while. I, I, I uh, moved to Colorado in my, my late 20s. Uh, before getting into real estate, I worked in radio. Uh, I was a promotions and marketing director for, for uh, a couple of prominent radio stations in the Denver market. And um, my uh, mom started a real estate company. My, my, my parents have been in real estate for, for years and years and years. Always bought, sold investment properties. My mom got her license, um, you know, did property management, was just a regular realtor for a while decided that she wanted to open her own shop because she thought she could do it better, um, recruited me to come work for her. So uh, I went and uh, worked for her, um, uh, actually in the, in the Florida area, uh, moved Florida, uh, cross country, packed wife, kids, moved across country, didn't know anybody, um, and that was 17 years ago. Oh, wow. So, and so, yeah. have you been, so you've been doing real estate for, oh, geez. And in addition to 17 years, how long have you been doing? Well, yeah, I mean, it's been 17. I've been a broker for about the last 14 of those 17. So during that time, we, we, we were an independent um, uh, shop for a while. And then uh, we decided to franchise and, and we uh, bought a Remax franchise. And so I ran a Remax franchise for 10 years. I was a broker owner of a Remax franchise for 10 years. Okay. And then how did you get involved with Rex? Well, I sold my franchise and happened to just kind of be in this kind of limbo area. I was going to do some commercial real estate, um, had my resume just kind of up, you know, LinkedIn and stuff. And Rex called me out of the blue and I was like, oh, wow, this is really kind of a cool situation. It's part of the reason why I sold my franchise. I, I knew there was a company, I knew that real estate was ripe for a tech company to come in and kind of take a chunk out of the real estate business, you know, much like, you know, travel agents and, and taxis. And, you know, there's so many industries now, Amazon. I mean, you look at all these industries that have gotten, you know, kind of um, had a tech company come and take, take a little piece out of them. And, and real estate really hasn't had that. You know, the, we have Zillow, but Zillow was more as a, a marketing platform, you know, really wasn't, they weren't a brokerage, they weren't buying or selling real, you know, helping people buy or sell real estate. So tell me a little about like the process of, of selling with Rex and why is it different than using a traditional real estate agent? Well, it's different because we are a data and tech driven company first. So uh, we really dive into our data in, in, and into our technology to help promote homes, okay? So if you're selling with Rex, we don't put our homes on the MLS, first of all. So we do computer learning uh, to try to find people if you're selling a house and it's in a certain area. We do computer learning to figure out people around that area that may be interested in, in, in selling their home and buying a home. And, and there's all sorts of different analytics we use. And then we, we target people. You know, we really target consumers and say, okay, we think this person who maybe has a wife and three kids and, you know, some of their habits online are showing us that they may be ready to upgrade their house. Well, a house we have listed may be a good candidate for this person. Let's target these people, you know, electronically and and with you know, promote these houses to them that we have for sale so that's you know really kind of what separates us and by not putting our homes in the mls we don't require our sellers to give a buyer agent commission doesn't mean they can't do it it just means we're not requiring it right and, and i think that's kind of why i wanted to make sure that we included Rex in some form on this platform because you're pretty much, you know, unless it's a for sale by owner situation, you're the only company I know of that's kind of got the guts to say like, I'm not paying that. So, you know, as a seller, I think there's not really many people that empower that conversation. And, 
And especially when you do put your home on the MLS and you're not offering um, much to a buyer's agent, like you can get skipped or, or for sale by owners. Like if, if sometimes if an agent, oh, the really good agents will still talk you through it and, and talk about it. But a lot of agents, if they don't think they're going to get paid, they just won't show it to you or they won't mention it, you know, and, and then it, it's kind of a disservice to you, you know, and, and I don't know if that's part of the reason why you don't put it on the MLS. Is it, is it because of that purpose? Exactly. That's exactly the reason for it because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to help the consumer out and, and, you know, there's, and there's many ways we do it. It's not, you know, buying and selling real estate is just, is one little piece of what Rex does. We have a mortgage company, we have an insurance company, we have a title company, um, you know, we have, we have all these partners for flooring, window coverings, moving, storage, you name it, you know, we, we have partners for that. And the reason for that is, you know, we could be a one-stop shop and we will take care of the consumer's needs. You know, if you come to us and say, hey, I want to sell a house, great, fantastic, we can help you out. If you come into us and say, well, I think I want to sell the house, but I'm not sure, fantastic. Well, maybe not selling the house is the best option for you. Maybe we can refinance it and maybe, you know, putting some new floors and, and repainting it, putting a new roof, maybe that's your best option. And that's fine with us either way. We don't care if it's best for the consumer, then we're happy. Right. And I think that's key, you know, in what I've noticed in people that have used our platform is, is sometimes they get uh, in front of someone who doesn't have their best interest and then that person is pressuring them to do something that they're not ready to do. So whether it's list their home, start looking for homes when they weren't really ready to buy until maybe next year. Um, you know, and, and some people are easily swayed by information and, and that's not always the correct information. Uh, and, and so I think it's important that when we do these panels is that we just find people that are truly just looking to do something that's in the best interest of, of their client um, in all aspects of selling, you know, and, and cause unfortunately not everybody in this business thinks like that, which is what I noticed as I, as just a consumer see kind of the backside of this industry. It's not necessarily what's best for the consumer. Well, and one of the things that separates Rex from your traditional real estate company is we are salaried employees. So we are not independent contractors. And, and the nice thing about that is, you know, like I said, I, I was in the, the traditional um, area for, for many years in real estate, you know, own the Remax franchise. I made my money by, you know, what we made off of commissions. That's how I kept my, my doors open. That's how I put food on my table. Um, so the difference is because we're not independent contractors, you know, I don't need, we don't necessarily need that commission to put food on our table. We are going to come in and we're going to look at what's best for you. So as a consumer, because I don't need that sale today, I don't need to have that done today. As a consumer, if you come to us and say, well, you know, look, I'm, I want to sell in, in three months, um, you know, what, you know, and that's probably when I'm going to be ready. We're going to go fantastic. That's fine with us. Yeah, just put it on selling later until you do that. My yeah. shameless plug, but go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's talk about like the strategy for, for or the process of, of selling with Rex. So mm -hmm. is, is it just as simple and uh, as a normal, selling with a normal real estate agent? Um, yeah, we do. And fees and stuff in, included in that, what would those be? Okay, so we do two and a half percent commission, you know, for Rex to the seller. Um, and you have a designated relationship manager that is going to be, you're going to work with. So it's not hands off. We're not a discount brokerage. We're not, we do as much full service as any other brokerage out there. You'll have someone that you're in contact with, that you're, your point of contact, it's a real live person. They'll come out, they'll meet with you, they'll walk through the house, you'll look at comps, you'll discuss value of the home, just like you would with any other realtor. And then at that point, if you want to go ahead and sign up with us, we, you know, send a listing agreement, you look through it, sign up off of it. We hire a professional photographer, professional photographer comes out, takes photos of your house. And then at that point, we put it on our website and in many other, the, uh, you know, Zillow's of the world out there that, that we also have relationships with, uh, that we will then put your home on those websites as well because we're marketing directly to the consumer. Because mm -hmm. nowadays, 
you know, when I first started real estate, not to date myself, but to date myself, when I first started real estate, uh, they had just gotten rid of the books, you know, so you, you know, you used to get a book from the, uh, from the board and, you know, with all the listings in it. And they just got rid of that and they, they got into a CD-ROM, but it was still a CD-ROM. That's in the only people that could get the CD-ROM were, were real estate companies. And so if you had a buyer that was looking to buy a house, they come in and they meet with you and they go, well, I want a three, two, and I want 2000 square feet. I want to be in this school district. And, you know, I want, you know, a, you know, walk-in shower and a garden tub, and they give you their laundry list of wants, right? And then you, as a, as a realtor, go into CD-ROM, and you filter through all the new listings, and you call your buyer back and go, okay, I found five homes that I think will work for you. And then, you know, a lot of times, if you're really doing your job well, you go preview those five homes before you even call them, and then you call them, and you put them in your car, and you drive them around. It was a whole process. I mean, it really worked hard to get a sale. Well, since it's all gone online, that's out the window anymore. Nowadays, any consumer could go online and look and find a house. So what they do now is, you know, if you had a buyer, the buyer calls you up and says, hey, I want to look at this, 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 and this house. They give you the homes. All you're doing is opening the door and writing the contract. So we were like, well, why are we paying, you know, buyer's agents 3%, 2.5%, 2% commission to do these things? It just right. didn't make sense. Right. And, and, you know, um, the one thing I wanted to highlight, too, is it, you're not on the MLS, but as you pointed out, like, you, you do put it on other platforms um, and other, you know, the main searchable areas. You yes. know, can you list off a few of those? Like, where would your home show up? Uh, you know, Zillow, Trulia. Um, we're one of the few uh, Google real estate partners. So we, we have a very good relationship with Google. Like I said, we're a tech company. So a lot of our tech guys, we have an office in San Francisco. A lot of tech guys came from Google, Facebook, um, uh, Netflix. I mean, we have some very uh, smart engineers that are working for us that know how to, that are way above my pay grade <laughs> and know how to promote to the general public uh, online. Right. And so, you know, we talked about uh, buyer's agent commission, mm -hmm. uh, but I know that you have a separate piece to your platform if someone uses your services to buy a home that mm -hmm. maybe is offering uh, yeah. a buyer's agent commission. So how does that work? So two different ways, and, and let me explain both, kind of both things. If, if you're a buyer and you're interested in a Rex listing, and you could come to us directly, and we will designate another boots on the ground person to represent you. So we always try to keep all our transactions at arm length transaction, at an arm's length deal. So, you know, the seller has someone that represents them, the buyer has someone who represents them. The seller still only pays two and a half percent commission. If you're a buyer and you still want to look at, let's say, homes in the MLS, we could also help you with those. And then if we, if you decide to buy one of those homes, and let's say that home is offering a 3% commission, we will give you half of that buyer agent commission back to you as a rebate. Right, and for those that don't understand what a rebate is, because I know there are 10 states, right? 10 states that don't allow it. Yes. Um, which, is, which is so odd to me. And I, I, eventually I'd hope they'd catch up, but um, you know, how does a rebate work? Is it go towards your closing cost? Is it, is it a check at the end? How does that work? Yeah, traditionally it goes towards your closing costs. So, and, you know, at the end of the day, if you're getting a mortgage, the mortgage company has ultimate say not to get too much in the weeds and in the actual process, but um, the mortgage company has a say whether or not that rebate can be applied. Most mortgage companies are okay with it. You know, at the end, it's our commission, you know, it's Rex's commission to kind of do with what we want. So that rebate goes towards closing costs, um, you know, prepaid stuff like that, that would be, you know, a hard cost for you as a consumer. You know, I know it's not, you know, necessarily a check. It's not like, you know, a, you know, cash in hand, uh, but that will save you a lot of money at your closing table and, and will, you know, mean that you probably don't have to come to the table with as much money. So one way or another, you'll end up getting that money in, in your pocket. Right. And so if you're, if you are not, or I'm sorry, if you are buying a, another Rex home, you, what does that cost look like for a buyer? Zero. 
here. Is if, you're rep if you're representing the buyer to buy a Rex home. Uh, if you're representing the buyer, it costs the buyer nothing and they get full representation. Okay. And, and the advantage of that is, you know, now a seller isn't having to dole out another two and a half, three percent, you know, of the, you know, of the purchase price. So, you know, they're a little bit more willing to negotiate with you to maybe, you know, uh, they're, they're a lot more willing basically to negotiate with you as a buyer. Right. So people always think, you know, they think, well, I'll just hire a, a realtor because, you know, if I'm a buyer, I'll just go get a realtor. I need a realtor. They're going to protect me. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm not paying the commission. The seller's paying the commission. Yeah, yeah it's kind of true. But, you know, at the end of the day, that seller is, you know, has a bottom line they're going to hit. And so if they're having to pay another two and a half, three percent, you know, off of their bottom line, someone's going to have to pay for that. Right, right. So, so if I'm a buyer and I'm buying a Rex home, mm -hmm. there's no cost to me to use yeah. the service. Okay. But if I am a client of a traditional agent and I am buying a Rex home, I'm on the hook to pay my agent. So what do most people do to pay that? there's uh, different creative ways we go about it. I mean, you know, they could ask for the seller to, to pay for that. Um, and, you know, sometimes the seller will, you know, it, it really depends on the deal. Um, you know, most sellers will look at, at a full contract. They'll look at the price, closing costs, or, you know, or, uh, financing, uh, closing date, you know, everyone thinks that, you know, the price is, is the primary thing. And it is, I mean, for most, deals the price is really the most important thing but you know sometimes it's the terms that can also really sway a deal so you know you could be a, a, a full price offer and have a VA loan and again not to get too much in the weeds right. or you could have maybe a, a, a offer that's five thousand dollars below asking and be a cash offer and those are going to be kind of even offers at the end of the day because right. You know, the cash offer, you know, is going to go through. You don't have to worry about financing as much. You don't have to worry about some of the uh, inspections that you would have to deal with the VA loan. Right. Okay. And so, and you know, I want to make sure just people understand this. So um, if I have a traditional agent and I buy a Rex home, what, how do I as the buyer pay for my agent? Do you just roll it into your, your costs? It, it would either get negotiated maybe into the sales price. Um, or sometimes uh, the buyer will pay their buyer's agent directly. You know? Right, so, and that's, I guess that's what I was getting to. Like yeah. if, if I'm a buyer, and even if you find it for sale by owner, how does a buyer pay their agent directly? Yeah, a lot of times it gets rolled into the price. Okay. So, you know, again, sellers have a bottom line. So if they're gonna have to pay the buyer's agent commission, well, we'll just up the price that 2% to pay for it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure people understood that. Cause I, I think as, as we move through different selling services, I think for sale by owner and these types of situations, like with Rex, it's going to happen more often where people are just going to say like, I don't, I don't want to pay that. And mm -hmm. so, you know, understanding what happens if you find a home and, and you do as a buyer, owe your agent commission somehow, you know, that's, you need to understand how that's going to work. It's doable. It's not like you can't do it, but you know, I, I think that's important to understand those processes. Yeah. Um, and like I said, everyone thinks that you could, you know, I just hire buyer's agents free. Well, no, you're, right. you're, paying, for, you're paying for it, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer. One way or another, you just don't maybe realize it. You right. Know? Right. I, I, I always, I can't stand that when I, I follow a ton of real estate forums online and, and there's one it's a community of like 300,000 people and consumers and agents and so many times an agent writes like well using a buyer's agent is free and I'm always commenting like not really um you know and are you explaining to your client what happens if they find a for sale by owner or someone that's not going to pay you know you you do have to get paid somehow so if the seller's not going to do it like the, the i mean the buyer's paying it's like chicken or the egg right like who's mm -hmm. it's coming out of the buyer's fund it's coming out of the seller's equity but um someone has to pay it right it's not like it's necessarily it's not free when you have to pay it yourself 
And I don't think that's clear. And I think there's some uh, lawsuits going around now to remove uh, the ability for someone to say that right now, correct? Yeah, well, yes. To be able to say a buyer's agent is free, I guess is. Yes, yes. And, you know, there was a settlement recently, National Association of Realtors, where, you know, one of the things was the buyer agent commission was, has always been hidden in the MLS to the general public. And now they have to disclose what that commission is. And, you know, as a buy, as a, how's that helped the consumer? Well, you know, now you can have an idea, you know, if you hire a, a agent and the agent has 10 homes they're showing you and you can see what that agent's going to get paid and you can make sure that they're, they're showing you homes, whether or not it's a one and a half percent commission or a 3% commission that you're getting, it doesn't matter to them. They're showing you what you want as a consumer because ultimately that's who they work with. You, the consumer, right. to make sure you, you can buy a house. Will they also show uh, the incentives that sometimes are put on a home? Yeah, like bonuses, yeah. Yeah, will that show up too? I believe so. Because I, I didn't know that that was a thing uh, until someone, uh, Lindy Chapman had mentioned it to me that sometimes there's like a $5,000 incentive if you bring me a seller by this date. Mm -hmm. And like a consumer will never know about that. And, and it's like, well, are you showing me this home because you get an extra five grand? Is that why you're pushing me to buy this? Or is it like a really good home? Um, and, uh, and none of us, I think, you know, speaking for consumers knew that that was even something that would go on. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just part of that transparency model of, of, you know, as a consumer understanding all these fees and commissions and things that fly around behind the scenes that you're essentially, you're paying for it. You know, consumers are paying for this whole industry. Uh, and so, you know, that missing piece of transparency is like incredibly frustrating uh, when you know that without sellers and buyers, this industry would tank. Um, but yet they don't get the transparency and they, they don't get um, the honest truth sometimes in, in the process. And, and that's frustrating. It is. It's hugely frustrating. And that's why Rex was formed. Mm -hmm. You know, really, you know, our, our CEO, Jack Ryan, you know, went through, you know, selling this house and he got frustrated with it. And he said, there's got to be a better way of doing this. And, and, you know, and, and that is how, you know, Rex you know, came to be, and, and we really feel that, you know, it's best for the consumer, you know, and, and that is our number one, you know, goal in mind whenever we meet with people, how can we do what is best for our consumers, our customers? Right. And, and so to help people navigate this, I like to say non-traditional because the, you know, that word discount agent flies around a lot and it mm -hmm. drives me nuts because you know, there's no real set commission. Um, mm -hmm. and, and throughout the industry, there are agents that like help their friend out and, and lower their commission for them. And I'm like, well, then you're discounting, I guess. So like, are you, you know, so like if there's no traditional set commission, like that word discount shouldn't really be involved. So non-traditional is, is the way I prefer. Yeah. So, you know, it, you know, if, if Rex isn't in your area, like what are some tips for someone to find a non-traditional selling service? Yeah, I mean, I would start by, you know, just doing a, a simple Google search, you know, just start that way. Um, and that's good because that's going to show people that are maybe a little bit more progressive, more, you know, tech driven, a little bit more data driven. If you, if you find now, you, you know, I guarantee your first page is going to be all your traditional real estate companies. But, you know, as you dive into it, you're going to be able to find some that aren't maybe your traditional uh, company. And, uh, you know, that's probably a, a good way to just get started. Most, I think, the non-traditional companies are very tech-driven. Uh, they're, they're looking at technology, you know, your mobile phone apps. We use our, uh, you know, our app is hugely important for our connection with our consumer. Um, we use it all the time to, to communicate, you know, with our customers. And, and it's a big part of our, our model. And, and it's a really nice thing to have. It, 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 talk about transparency. You know, people don't understand when they write a contract to that closing date, there's so much that goes into this. And 
buyers and sellers don't have all the information of what's happening. And we're trying to make that very transparent. So they understand, hey, this is exactly where your file sits at this particular point. This is what we need from you, Mr. and Mrs. Bu seller or Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, you know? And these are the documents you need to turn in by the end of the week, you know? So we try, we're trying to make everything as transparent as we possibly can. Right, it, you know, and I think it's important too when you're searching is to understand that there are uh, non-traditional brokerages um, that have, people on staff. So there, as we talked about before, they're, they're paid by a salary. Um, but there are pockets of companies that offer a low commission, but they don't really even have anyone on staff. They're just shuffling you off to an agent that agrees to pay a lower commission. Um, so, you know, I think when people are searching, I think it's really important that you're asking, do you, do you work for this company or am I just being referred to you? You know, are you, an, are you a staff member? Like, do you work here? Because I think that's going to be really crucial to the whole process versus sending me to an agent that has to pay their brokerage a percentage, a traditional agent that's willing to sell my home for 1%, but then they also have to give that 1% and they have to give a chunk to their, their boss, their brokerage. Um, and so you have to wonder when that person's working on commission only, like, a, and you're not paying that much, are you going to get the same service? You know, and, and and when you work with a company that's structured similar to, to Rex and you look at their on salary, I, I feel like that kind of leaves you to have uh, the best interest and in, in the best decisions made for you versus being shuffled off as a referral. So, you know, when, when people are searching, I think it's really important to ask, like, do you work here? Are you on their, their payroll, you know, instead of, am I just being referred to you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ask them, you know, I, I ask them how they're getting paid. You right, know, right. I mean, I mean, it's an awkward conversation because that's not something we're used to doing in our society. Right. You don't go around asking like your your best friend, "Oh, how do you get paid?" I mean, right. just well, mine. Uh, sadly, mine. Uh, <laughs> me and my friends are way too transparent about stuff. But you know, I, I think it's important. You know, nobody likes to talk about money. And I had a traditional agent tell me like a lot of consumers don't bring up commissions because it's uncomfortable. But you have to start as a consumer empowering yourself to know like you're going to pay for this home for 30 years or at least 15, maybe mostly 30. Um, and so you have to really understand like, what's that going to be a cost to you, you know, and, and who's working for you. And as a seller, that's your equity that you're either applying to another house or you're using it for something else. And, and so you have every right to know how much you're paying, who's getting paid. Um, and I know we talked about this before, but these, this mass explosion of referral platforms um, that are connecting you with an agent, but taking 30% of that agent's commission because they sold your name to them. Um, you, you know, I, I think that's going to be key even to ask an agent, like, how did you get my information Or, You know, I, it's just a, such a tricky world. And, and for as a consumer, like it's really hard to find someone that you can trust that has your best interest. Um, so, you know, with this panel, I hope we can continue to highlight different companies, you know, and understand different selling processes of people that just want to help you versus make a ton of money off you and don't care about you. Yeah. You, you know, a good, a good trick if I was a consumer was, would be to ask if I had um, a real estate professional come in my front door and talk to me about listing their house. I would ask them to do something for me you know, in the next day, like give me some more comps or send me some more information to force them to see if they're going to actually do what they say they're going to do. So if they say, okay, great, I'll send you more information about my company, or I'll send you a copy of my listing agreement, you know, when I get home and see if they really do that. Cause some won't, or some may take like five days before they even get it to you. You'll know pretty quickly, you know, is this person really going to work for me or are they not going to work for me? Right. And, you know, so that's a you know good little trick just to, to put in there to see if you know this person really going to do what they say they're going to do. Right. Can you think of any other red flags when you're interviewing someone that you think maybe? Yeah, I mean, you, you should always ask you know the the normal questions that you you should ask. You know, how many deals? What you know? What do you do to negotiate? You know, those type of things to get an idea. You know, is this person again after my best interest, or are they after someone else's best, or are they after their own best interest? You know, sometimes 
you know, it's hard. You know, as realtors, you, you, you know, you're making money off of, you know, whatever you sold that week or that month. So, you know, sometimes right. they want to sell more than you want to sell. So right. you know, that's right. not in your best interest. Right. It's funny. I had um, uh, an agent for the uh, traditional agent on the Atlanta panel said the other day, he's like, you almost want to ask, like, you almost want to know, like, what is your agent's like credit score? Like, what's their credit history? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, are, are they financially comfortable or like, did they need this sale in order to pay their bills? And, and I understand that's the, that's the land of a sales position, but, mm -hmm. but it's like, it, it's, it stinks as a consumer that you have to like second guess everybody's intentions first being able to trust somebody, you know, are they giving me the right advice or they like, do they really need this sale right now? Exactly. Right. And, and make no, no, no bones about it. You know, realtors are very skilled salespeople. You know, there's tons of sales um, coaches and, and, you know, I was, like I said, I was a broker. I had my own brokerage for, for 10 years. You know, a lot of my day was training and, and working with my agents to get them better honed, their sales skills better honed. So they can be very talented salespeople that will tell you things to make you do, you know, not make, make you do, no one could do anything they don't want to do, but they could certainly spin it pretty well. And, right. and so, you know, maybe always take a day, you know, never sign anything right then and there, it, you know, maybe take a day to step back, look at everything, process it to make sure you're really comfortable with the situation. Right. And, and the one thing I wanted to point out too, is everybody that sits on, on these city panels um, from an agent perspective. I don't pick anyone unless they have um, at least like five or six years under their belt because they, A, you won't find them on referral platforms because most of them don't participate in that. Uh, but B, they have a, a steady client base and it's, a, a, of course, again, it's a sales position, but you know, they have a steady base of consumers and people using them that they're not desperate to close that sale right now. You know, it's almost like the more years experience you have, the more, at least the people that we've been able to connect with, it's, it's more about making the best decision for the client. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm really glad that we had a chance to talk because, you know, for selling later, we never will tell someone how they should sell their home. But I, I think understanding each piece of how you can sell is important because um, there's options now, there's lots of options. Um, and, and so I, I think educating everybody on, on the choices you do have to let you make your own decision is incredibly important in this day and age. I agree. If someone just has, you know, questions, they want to talk about, you know, the real estate, what's the best steps, what should I do next? You want to learn more about Rex and how we work. I'm more than happy to answer any of those questions. Great. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're on our panel. This will be great. Yeah. Um, is there anything you think I missed that maybe you wanted to touch upon or highlight? Not that I could think of. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to like walk through, you know, highlighting like what you do and explaining the differences, you know, and I know it's in simple terms to you, but as a consumer, it's like, okay, well, who pays that if I don't pay that and who, you know, so just kind of breaking it down into simple terms. It, it is. And, and, you know, as a real estate professional, I forget sometimes that, you know, most people, they buy or sell a house. I mean, the national average is seven every seven years, you know, mm -hmm. seven, you know, seven to 15 years. So, you know, even if they say to you, oh, I bought and sold in the past, you know, you can't really take that for, you know, in, unless, you know, they, they have real evidence. I always kind of take it as, okay, I understand you bought in the past or sold in the past, but I'm still going to treat you like you don't know what you're talking about because it probably was seven years and it's not something you do in a daily thing. Right. We do it daily. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll talk to people or clients and I'll forget that they probably have no idea what I'm even talking about, right. you know, because, right. you know, I'm jumping at high levels and they, you know, uh, just don't do it on the regular. Right. It's funny you say that because I'm even working on a, like a, a glossary of terms to put on our, to put on our platform that just break everything down into simple terms. And because um, I think sometimes in conversations, you're like designated agency. Like, what does that mean? You know, like, and some people it's like, what is a broker? I don't know what a broker is. How are they different than like a real estate agent? And, and even like the difference of like, what's an agent versus what's a realtor? 
which I, I can never, I always want to say real, realtor, and I know that's not right, but I can't, I, I want to like throw an O in there, and I know I shouldn't be able to do that, but, right, I got it, I'll, I'll get it at some point. Well, and one of the things I did, I forgot to even mention to you, when I owned my brokerage, uh, I taught um, ethics at my board for years, so, and one of the things I used to tell people, because, you know, you're required to take the ethics class every year, and when it, you know, I'd sit in the class and a couple hundred people in there, I'd say to them, I said, look, you do what's right by your consumer, you're going to be fine. 99% of the time, you'll be fine. Now, is there exceptions to the rules? Absolutely. But, you know, if you just do what is right by your client, you won't have much to worry about ever. Right. Which seems simple, right? It yes. seems very simple. But it's easy to get sucked into it and go, Oh, because there's, there's such big money in this. I mean, you can make a lot of money doing this job. And so there could be such big money that you could get easily sucked into it and, you know, kind of push people maybe the wrong way or not communicate or not tell them something because, you know, that $10,000 commission is sitting there and it's like, oh, they don't need to know that there's going to be a power plant, you know, uh, right. belt by, behind the house, right. you know. And, and you know, I just won't tell them that. I'll just play ignorant. I'll pretend I never heard it, you know, because I really want that $10,000, you know. Right, right. I bought, I bought my tickets to Hawaii. I'm ready to go. Right, right. You know, it's funny you mentioned that too, because it's even when you're, you know, as I'm building, selling later, it, it's almost like the same thing when you're building a company and, and people want to, to partner with you and give you money to do X, Y, and Z. And and, and I, I even got approached by a home warranty company who said, hey, if you sell home warranties for us, we'll kick you back $60. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but that's not, that doesn't help. What, what if the consumer doesn't need it? Or what if your warranty program's like total BS and doesn't cover anything? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so for me, it's hard for selling later because I remain completely uh, unbiased. I don't partner with people. I don't take money from people. Um, because I feel like if you're going to be like a true consumer ally, you can't do that. You know, you can't start taking kickbacks and you can't start promoting certain people because they paid you more money than the other group because, you know, that's not always going to be the best interest for the consumer. And it's not always right. So it's just funny you say that from the ethics standpoint. It just reminds me of kind of what I go through and, and constantly having to say, like, is this going to help a consumer or is this just helping me? Yeah. Um, Cause that's a fine line. Yeah, it is. It really is. And it's hard because you get put in situations as a real estate professional where you, you know, you'll get information, you'll know something and you have to pass that information along to your client, knowing full well that it most likely will kill that deal. And you, you know, in the back of your brain, I never, I never added my commission. I never wanted to know. I didn't care. I was like, it, I'll find out when I get the check at closing. That's the only time I really cared about it. But, you know, it's just human nature to go, oh, well, wow, you know, this is a, you know, $10,000 check waiting for me. I just got to get through these last little things. And that's a hard thing. It's, it's human nature to have to go, oh, man, I'm, if I tell them this, I'm probably going to lose that money. Right, right. You have, to, you have to. That's your job. Right, right. Right. And I think that's one of the interesting things about when, when you have someone that's on salary, that's not necessarily, you know, I, I think it's much easier to, yeah. I mean, you should always do what's best, but I think it's a little bit easier when you know you still have a, a paycheck coming in and you can feed your family, even if the, if this doesn't go through. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, it, it, it gives that pressure off of you and it allows you to, help your client make the best decision. You know, at the end of the day, we, we're not decision makers. We're advisors, we're consultants. That's all we are. We don't make any decisions in anything. The consumer makes all the decisions. But we could give them very unbiased opinions about, hey, you know, look, maybe this isn't best for you. Maybe you should walk from this. You know, this is not a good deal for you. It's maybe best that you don't do this because this isn't the right thing. And we'll go ahead and we'll start back over and we'll find you another one. Yeah.